an interesting issue happens as far as when a process is exiting. Let's look, for instance, at the kill system call. So the kill system call takes a process ID and then marks, uh, tries to kill that process. But let's see what it means to kill a process. So what happens basically is it's going to go through the process table. Therefore, it has to acquire and release the lock. What's it going to do? It's going to go through and try and find a process ID. Now, interesting, uh, no use of the guard here. So how would I have written this? I probably would have said if P uh, arrow PID is not equal to PID continue and then unindented this. But in any case, the important thing it does is it just marks it as killed. So set this bit that says you have been killed. Now let's just think what state could the process be in when this happens? Well, it could be running right now. That's a possibility. It could be runnable. It could be sleeping. Right? And so, and I guess it could actually be a zombie too. So what happens? We're going to go ahead and say, well, if you're sleeping, we want to go ahead and make you be runnable. Because there's no reason for you to be sleeping, waiting on I.O., given the fact that we don't want you to handle any I.O. anymore, because we want you to. So if this is the case, if we find the process ID, we mark it as killed, release our lock, and return zero. And then let's look at what happens, right? How does it actually exit? Well, in the trap handler, what will happen is if we are, let's look at the example. Let's say, for example, the process is running that was just killed. Okay, so if the process is running, it still continues on. Seems kind of weird, right? We're in user mode and it just continues on. There's nothing that actually stops the process in its tracks and says, you don't get any more CPU time. Instead, it finishes quanta, right, until the timer occurred. And that kind of makes sense, because let's say we're on CPU 1 and the user process is running, and CPU 2 is actually one that does the kill. Well, there's no way to get CPU 1 to just jump in and stop this from running. It set a timer. It's going to have to wait till the timer uh, expires. But it might be that this process actually makes a system call. So the process has been killed, but makes a system call. So when it makes a system call, the first thing we do is we check and we say, hey, before we do this system call, before we waste our time with it, have we been killed? If so, let's exit. And then we go ahead and save the trap frame, make our system call, and then we check afterwards to see, are we killed? How could the system call have caused us to be killed? Well, maybe we killed ourselves, right? Maybe the system call was kill my process ID. That's certainly a possibility. So if we've been killed, we exit. That is if it was a system call. If it was any other trap, we still check and see, are we running in user mode? That is, were we running in user mode with this process that is killed in a killed process? And if so, then we'll exit. So this, a good example, would be the case where we got a timer interrupt, right? So the quantum for this process that was running expired and therefore we'll go ahead and exit because we have already been killed. But it could be for any sort of interrupt. A user typed a key on the keyboard, okay? And in the midst of going to handle that, we'll also look and say, oh, wait a second, this process uh, is killed anyway, so let's just go ahead and kill it. No reason running any further. So that's that code. Now, what does exit actually do? Keep in mind, we are running on this process's kernel stack. That is the process we're trying to get rid of. So it could be a little tricky because we can't free up everything. For example, uh, we can't free up our kernel stack because we're executing on the kernel stack. So what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and see. Well, there is a special proc, the very first proc we start. We don't ever want to kill that one. So uh, we panic if that's the case. Otherwise, there's code that's going to clean up our file descriptors, and then we're going to go ahead and do something in the process table. So we go and lock the process table, and then we'll get back to wake up a little bit later. And then we go through the process table, and we are going to... Well, let's just back up a second. So remember that a, pro a parent process can do a wait on its child. So if the parent process has been waiting on this child, this is a chance to wake up that parent. Basically say, hey, 
parent, go ahead and know that uh, you, a child of yours uh, has exited. So note that that parent process isn't going to actually run until we release the table lock, right? Because that parent process would now actually become runnable. But no CPU is going to be going through trying to execute it because we're holding the table lock. So we're holding the table lock and we're only going to release it once we go back to the scheduler. So we wake up our parent and then we have to deal with our children. So this is, there were, there were two levels that we had here, right? We have the, let's call it the exiting proc. We have its parent and we have potentially children. So first we want to be telling our parent, hey, we have exited or we are exiting. I guess by the time the parent runs, we have exited. And uh, so now if you're waiting, you'll get that notification. There are children that we may have forked and that we may have already waited on, so they're no longer in here. But if there are children for whom we have not yet waited, that's a problem. Because we're going to consider a zombie state. A zombie state is a state of a process whose parent has not waited on it. Okay. So what are we going to do? We're going to go through and we're going to basically say, if any processes in the process table have me as a parent, then I'm not around anymore. I'm not going to be around to wait on them. So I'm going to go ahead and adopt them to the init process. Those processes may still be running, right? Some of these children may be running. The running children will eventually exit and notify their parent, the init process. Some of these processes, however, may already have completed. They're stuck in, they're in this zombie state. They were waiting for us to do a wait on them, okay, to find out about them. If we're not going to do the wait, somebody needs to do the wait. And so we're going to go ahead and wake up the init process. And tell it basically, hey, wake up. You might want to do a wait. We'll, we'll, we'll see this code in a moment. And then we mark ourselves as a zombie. We hope we won't be a zombie for too long. We know we have a parent. Maybe it's our original parent that forked us. Or maybe we actually are now adopted and we're children of the init proc. But in any case, we're going to temporarily be a zombie until our parent will now wait on us. How long that's going to be, we don't know. If our parent is just running blithely around and not doing waits, then it could be a long time we're a zombie. But we're a zombie until our parent waits on us. The good news about the init proc, by the way, is it doesn't, it is very quick to wait. That's in fact all its, all its job is. And then when we're done, we go ahead after marking ourselves as a zombie and go into the scheduler. We're holding the P table lock, which we are required to do, because schedule calls uh, the yield, and we're good to go. So once we've entered, once we're a zombie process, we still have our kernel stack for that process. And we also have our user memory. And we also have our page directory. So there's a lot of resources that are still there that need to be freed, but that are really impossible for the process itself to free. Right? If you think of it, the kernel stack, it, the, the, the code on the kernel stack can't free the stack itself. So the parent is responsible for clearing up all vestiges of the child after the child is done. So what happens? On a, in a wait, right? So when the, pro, when the parent calls wait, then we acquire the p-table lock again, as we expect, and then go through. And we're going to go through this loop. We'll look at this. So we are going to go through the process table. And if we find, again, this is a use of a guard. So if the parent is not equal to our curve proc, we continue. We don't use a guard here, but we could. If p-state is not equal zombie, we could have continued. But in any case, we found a zombie child. Okay, what are we going to do to the zombie child? 
we're going to go ahead and free up its stack. All right? That's fine. It's not going to need it anymore. It's never executing again. Right? Never going to be running, never runnable. And then we free the page directory. Free VM is actually going to free not just the page directory, it's going to free also all of the user pages associated with it. And then we set everything else in the process table to zero. We set its state to unused. And now this is sort of a fresh uh, process table entry that can be used. We release the lock and we return. So wait returns once it's found one child. However, what if the parent never waits? It's certainly possible for you to write code that forks five processes and then exits. Well, what will happen to those processes? They will be reparented, right? Adopted to the init proc. And the init proc, this is its sole code. It just goes through and calls wait. Okay? So while it waits, and while the process ID that's waiting for is not the shell, because the very first thing the init process does is, is spawn the shell. So if the user quits the shell, then we quit the init proc. But other than that, any process that it waits for, it just waits and then just does a printf to print. There was a zombie. So that's its entire job in life is wait for otherwise unwaited on children. And this frees up their, all of their memory and other resources that have been allocated. That's, there still can be a long time where we've got a process which is in the zombie state, right? We have this happen if we've got a parent who hasn't called waited, but the, who hasn't called wait on the child, but the parent has not exited. For instance, if you've got a shell and the shell does forking, but doesn't wait on everything, then that shell is creating multiple zombie processes.